Hey guys. <clears throat> so I'm gonna give you a uh, small lecture of how exactly we're gonna do this uh, Photoshop editing. So let's open Photoshop quickly. Yeah. Set this aside. Okay, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Just a matter of the name. Let's say example. And uh, with a custom preset. Um, the Wheaton height can be as you want, but I recommend the resolution to be anything in between 200 if you want a lighter file to 400 or something like that you can see that it's just like, like here it's going to tell you the size of the file so I'm going to work with a full HD image so 1080p by there it is so 6 megabytes not that big of an image um, here you can choose the color. We're gonna go for white, but I could change it. Um, so yeah. So, okay, here I have my image. What am I gonna do? Is like uh, I actually built a small 3D model that I'm gonna use as if this was my original model. So. What I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to get this small model and I'm um, going to put people in it and make it look much more appealing because you can see it's kind of blend, you know, and this type of person that you have is definitely not the best. So let me just take a couple perspectives. Yeah, um, so one of the things you have, you should have in mind is, uh, and then, okay, let's take this off. Example two, like you have some interesting things happening in your model. Let's say you have this curve here. Um, this can become an interesting thing. You know, this small platform I have. Uh, for the most part, for now, this is enough. Okay, so we're gonna go to Photoshop. We're gonna go or open up your desktop and and find your example files. So in my case, is here. Um, what I'm going to do is like, I can work with this exactly like this, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is like, I'm going to hit Control A, and then I'm going to copy this, go back into the example, and copy it, because this has a bigger resolution. And, okay, I put this here. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hit Control J in order to make a copy of what I just did. So, another thing, um, I have here a couple of templates of people um, that just serves as good examples. You know, uh, I'm going to copy the image and Control V it here again. Same thing goes for here. Copy image, Control V. Um, you see that in this case it's too big. So what you can do is like you click on the image and go for here for image adjustments. And I'm gonna look up. Uh, 
I'm sorry, image, uh, image and image size for, and then you can choose up quick. How big is this going to be? Or, you know, you can just get this small panels around here and use them to resize the way you want it. Uh, okay, anyway. When you have your templates of people, it's here on the right side, you can uh, shut off your layers with a small eye. Okay, so when you have your template of people, um, let's say I want to choose this guy. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hit Control and J again. Shut off my main layer so I preserve it the way it is. And the selection to come here and hit Control X. Now I select again this layer I just did and just delete it. Now I control, I paste it, and here I go with the guy. Now, what's happening here is like there's too much information as you can see. So, well, I'm shutting off my main layer and just leaving the background, the guy, and the model. Uh, so, in order to bring like much more attention to the details I want, what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna hit W up or I can go to here and uh go for the magic one tool. I'm gonna select the layer I'm gonna work in first in this case the image background. I can shut this off just so it's not in my way. So I'm gonna hit W up and hit the areas I don't want to be in my drawing anymore. So this one and I can delete it. And this one and I can delete it. This thing, this thing, this thing. So what I just did was um, I made my drawing completely uh have a complete blank background. So now I can work much better with it. Now I turn on the layer again of my guy and W. I'm sorry, select the layer, W, and delete. So this way, um, I mean, you can see that there's nothing in between him and the background. Now, uh, if you're using Photoshop with the standard panels, uh, it might come in like this. So what you have to do is like when you select an image, you go here up on top and and mark the box, show transform controls, and there you have it. I have this guy um, with the controls. I can resize the image, I'm holding shift. So it doesn't change the the ratio. As you can see, you can like that's why you hold shift. It automatically brings it. So what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna put him here and just choose a spot for him. So maybe he's a little too big. Let's see. I I bring him a little smaller. And there you have it. So if you want to zoom in, if, if you hold Alt and zoom in, okay, of course, because um, like the the image it says very bigger. Like uh, you're gonna see that there's a lot of corners. Uh, if you want to change this, make your drawing look a little better. Uh, what I recommend is, for instance. This guy, I'm gonna go for future. I'm gonna accept the selection, and uh, I'm gonna go to futures. See that he's he's he has way uh, more pixelated feeling than the background. So 
go for future blur and Gaussian blur. Of course, I don't want to blur him completely, so I'm gonna change the small box to radius and get let's say 0 0.2, and there you have it. It's a little much more smooth now. And this like first image is the first example of this type of template. So now let's get to the other layer. So here I have this bunch of people. Um, I, I hit what and roll my mouse wheel to bring it backwards a little. Hold shift and use the control tools to resize it. So again, I'm gonna control J. Uh, oh yeah, one of the things like when, you, when you're resizing or doing something like this, um, you have to hit enter right after. So if not, you're gonna lock um, your transforming controls. So after you accept your transformation, uh, hit Control J again and take a look here. You're creating a new copy. I'm gonna shut down my first layer because I don't want to mess up something I have. W and the background is gone. So let's say you don't have an image that's that sharp. You can actually change this type of um, selection. Let's say uh, by changing the tolerance. The tolerance basically mandates how much of the image it is going to take off. So that you can see that the shadows here are not being taken by this selection. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to lower it down, and now you have it. See. Uh, so I'm going to go and um, delete this uh, in between their lights. And again, uh, you have to be careful with this because we want a very nice image. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to choose which one I want. In this case, I'll get this. Uh, woman here on the right and I'm deleting the white spots so she doesn't mesh with the background and uh, what I'm gonna do again is like I'm gonna go to the selection to select her control X and I can either delete this in this image or just hide it. Now I'm going to delete it to make the file smaller. And now Control V. So um, right now, um, remember, like I want to have something nice here. Um, so first thing, because I have two images now already put in place, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to go here on the right and lock this image, so I cannot click it anymore. And same with the guy, unlock him. So, it, it, like the only clickable thing is going to be this woman. I'm going to resize it again. So, I shift all the control panels, put it smaller, and move it in a way that it looks like it is within the perspective. So, let's say she's here or there. Okay. Now here's the thing. If I have two images that I want to change, okay, let's say I want her all the way back there. She's in front of the guy. Okay, so what am I gonna do is I'm gonna click uh I'm sorry, I'm gonna go for the image. First of all enter image uh, 
Um, sorry, it's, it's easier if I do. Yeah, um, sorry for that. But yeah, um, one of the things about Photoshop is you cannot do undo commands directly. You have to hold Control, Alt, and Z. And what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna change the order of this. So, um, what I usually the easiest way is like you go for layer and arrange, and you send it backward, or you know you can either come here and send it. Uh, below the layer we know it's the guy. We don't want to send her all the way down because she will disappear. So uh, let me name the layers here. Make the man the drawing sorry the building. And just I you just have to double click. And the woman. So I have my woman on the background, and now you see that she's all the way into the back. Now, what happened is, I see that a shadow here kind of bothers me, uh, because it's only halfway done, and no, I don't want to, I mean, honestly, don't want to give you guys trouble, like, creating a new shadow of this woman, so I'm going to just, I'm going to zoom in here, bring the shadow close to the edge, and hit enter, get E, which is my eraser down here, and gently delete here using the background as a uh, guide. So, you can see you have a shadow, I mean, it doesn't really match with the, the image, but that's so you have in mind when you're creating something else that you can just adjust it this way. And uh, for the most part, that's it. Um, try to, to create images of different sizes. And uh, remember to lock down things you do. Um, I would totally recommend that you get your layers that you are using and rearrange that in this, this way. So, uh, once you're done, just go for file, save as, and remember to change this to JPEG, which is the, the, the smallest compression size. Let's say final example. Then save it wherever you want it to be. Um, here, I usually go for the maximum quality. It's going to create a little larger file, but uh, it's going to reduce the, the compression in it, and uh, let's say it, it kind of gets you a little more megabytes on the image, but the quality is much, much better. You can use it on 10, but I, I would prefer, like, the full is 10, but I would totally prefer to go to, like, the maximum quality possible. Just so you understand, I'll save, like, one at the maximum, and one here, minimum quality, just so the differences can be spotted. So let's say you get low quality. Just hit the low one. Let, let's hit, let's let's go for the, the, the three or four for for quality. Uh, low quality. Okay, and then save it. Now let me get. My desktop here, and uh, this is the final example. 
and this is the minimum quality. Now you can see what happens here. It's because of the compression, the tones and colors. Look at the difference. Like you can actually spot. Let me put them side by side. Look at that. This looks exactly like what I did. And remember, this is the same image, so the quality is important. So imagine, like, you have this beautiful thing on Photoshop, because Photoshop is quality a lot like its maximum quality. So, see, you have this together with the original, and they pretty much look almost the same. You can see that there is little variations in the color, but that's because of you know, the type of the format. Um, so yeah, remember to always pick the best quality possible, even if you're going to sacrifice a little um, space. Like, try to get the best you can, even if it gets a little big. Uh, so guys, this is it for now. And um, if you feel like it, you need an auditorial, I can do it. Um, I won't be with you in tomorrow, which is Thursday, uh, but I hope this is this can be very helpful. And you can email me during the weekend or something like that, and I can help you a lot with anything you need. So that's it.